to happen just when I'm in a hurry. Good morning. Where's the fire? Hiya, Kelly. What's all the shooting for? Oh, hello, Jimmy. See, these young ladies were in just too much of a hurry. About 30 miles an hour too much. Oh, I'm sure it couldn't have been that fast. You see, we were... Kelly, I'm surprised. A beautiful day, an open road, three lovely girls in a hurry. You must be getting old. <laughs> Wait a minute, Jimmy. You know the order's about speeding. Oh, I know, Kelly, but these young ladies are uh, personal friends of mine. <laughs> What's the matter? Didn't I spell your name right in that story last week? I'm sure we'll be very careful in the future, Mr. Kelly. All right. You win. I had a boy. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Kelly. Kelly. Now hold that hook and ladder down after this, on account of I'll be watching for you. The power of the press, little kitty. Anytime you get in trouble, just call on Jimmy Dugan of the Herald. And uh, now that we're all old friends, how about little Tappy Paul, say uh, Thursday night, huh? Oh, thank you so much. Give us a ring sometime, anytime. You'll always find us out. I'll find you out, and I'll print it, too. something when he refused to sign our lease for that right of way. Uh, uh, yes, and at the next director's meeting, it'll be the Bayshore and Midland Central Railroad. And it'll <laughs> sure give me a kick to see our trains running over Midland Central track. Mm -hmm. Why, this is terrible, Mr. Matthews. Well, it's three o'clock, and you haven't even taken your two o'clock medicine yet. And you know that tobacco is very, very bad for you. Yes, that's right. Charlie, throw that cigar away. It's bad for my digestion. Oh, pardon me. You are, sir. And don't forget, in 15 minutes, you have to take one of these little white pills. No, yes. I heard the good news, sir. May I say congratulations? Thanks. Is 
Is this what you want? Yes, thank you. I don't know how he did it. Well, I do. He simply threw more money than you boys would go for. It would have been much better if we had renewed his lease. Now, what are you whining about? We all agreed to hold him up. If we didn't let him have the right of way, he'd have to bid his own track. And we had him right where we wanted him. What are we going to do about it, Tom? I don't know what you're going to do about it. Probably sit there and cry. But not me. I'm going over and tell that old buzzard a few things. I'm Bill Jones of the Express. Oh, yes. Well, even if you were Casey Jones and had your engine with you, you couldn't see Mr. Matthews. He's out. Uh, and that goes for you, too. Oh, don't mind me. I just came along for the ride. No, I don't eat candy. I don't like flowers. I never go to shows. There's no other entrance, and Mr. Matthews is still out. <laughs> Mr. Oliver, Mr. Matthews is busy. You can't go in. Well, I'm going in. I've got a few things to say that won't keep. Mr. Oliver, Mr. Matthews won't like it. Put it all on yourself. And you better be careful or I'll take your job away for the next director's meeting. Hey, hey, big boy, come here. What's this all about? Hey, what's the idea? I thought you said Matthews was out. Well, sue me. You're in the saddle now, you old buzzard, so enjoy your ride. But be careful you don't slip. Don't you worry about me. You and your crowd ought to be thankful that you've still got stock left in the railroad that I'm going to make pay dividends. I'm not going to slip. Why, you stretched your credit so thin to beat me that you've got one foot on a banana peel right now. Uh-oh, here he is. What happened, Mr. Oliver? Is it true you lost the middle and central? What are you going to do? Who Mr. struck Oliver? the first blow? Uh, <laughs> 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 Go ever let Oliver in here again. I don't want to see him. How about the reporters? They're still outside. Tell them I'm not here. I know, but J.B. Tell they... them I'm not. Show them in a couple of minutes. Right. <laughs> On a banana peel. Huh? <laughs> uh, your pill, sir. Uh... Boys, I'm going to let you in the private office. But take it easy and don't shove. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, all together. All right. What's the idea? Where is he? What is this, a, a runaround? You got another one of those frames of yours, eh? Well, you wanted to get in, boys. Make yourselves at home. Oh, come on, give us some of your wide That's the trouble, Stafford. You doctors don't seem to know anything but pills. This treatment is a specific in the condition of hyperacidity such as yours. Then why is it I still have indigestion? I've taken so many pills in the past year, I'm ball bearing in every joint. You fuss and fume and use up a lot of energy and stimulate the acid condition of your stomach. In consequence, you're nervous and irritable all the time. Who says I'm nervous and irritable? I do. John, you don't talk to people anymore. You bark at them. If you'd only take your medicine and obey orders, you'd be surprised at the results. Wouldn't he, Doctor? He certainly would, Miss Matthews. He's bad enough without you taking sides with him. John, it's high time stump about your condition. All right. What do you want me to do? I want you to get away from business for a few days. Take a vacation, get plenty of fresh air, and follow your diet strictly. <laughs> As usual. Remember, 
I've been through two operations. All right, all right. I'll go away. We'll leave in the morning. But remember, no more pills. If you take good care of yourself, you can forget all your medicine, except these tablets. I want you to take one after every meal. Don't take them on an empty stomach. Empty stomach? <laughs> My stomach has been nothing but empty. Oh, John! You see, Doctor, that's what I have to contend with all the time. Oh, I know it's very hard sometimes. Hey, here comes the Herald now. He'll show us how to get in. Ah, those busy gentlemen of the press. What's up, boys? You look a little great. Come here a minute, fellas. Huh? That's Rogers. Oh, I wouldn't judge too hastily, boys. You know, a case like this requires finesse. Meaning that you're going to walk right in and grab the old man by the hand? Well, something like that. Well, if you do, five will get you ten. That's and a bad. Who will get, get you four? Come on. Oh, can I have four bits? Wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. Don't crowd me, boys. I want some of this. You got it. Hey, Joe, come here. You heard these bets. Now, you hold the money. And uh, you boys hold Joe. Pardon me, boy. Pardon me. Pardon me. Pardon me. Hey, what's the idea of the makeup? Don't tell me. Let me guess. He thinks it's Halloween. Don't cheer, boys. The poor guy's crazy. I'm uh, Dr. Stafford's assistant. But, but Doctor. Uh, yes, yes, I know. Mr. Matthews expects me. Uh, don't detain me. Aside, aside, please. There goes my last ten bucks. Maybe you'll never come out. Now, my dear, your father has very wisely decided to go for a vacation. We'll be off. Now, I hope that doesn't interfere with any of your plans, my dear. Oh, you know I'd alter my plans to be with you and Daddy. What kind of a day did you have, dear? Well, this morning I went with Mildred and Jane to the beach. And this afternoon I went to Madeline's tea. Did you have a nice day? Terrible. Now, now, John. Oh, don't me. Why should I sit here and watch you two eat steak and pretend that thing? What I need is a good meal. Well, I'm afraid your good square meal, as you call it, would be the end of it. Yeah. Well, at least I wouldn't die hungry. Dr. Dugan. Dr. Stafford. I didn't know Stafford had an assistant. Where is he? He's in the living room, sir. All right, tell him I'll be right in. Yes, sir. I suppose this means more pills. Well, now, you know it in your condition. Now, you remember after my operation... Dr... Uh, uh, Dugan. Uh, Dr. Dugan. Well, let's get this thing over as quickly as possible, will you, Doctor? You see, Dr. Stafford... Yes, 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 I know. Uh, Dr. Stafford wanted me to make a thorough examination. Huh? Uh, uh, just sit down, please. Yes, I know, but Dr. Stafford is already... Yes, yes, I know. Now, just relax. Well, there are a few things that Dr. Stafford wanted me to check up on. Oh, please. Ah, rapid heart action. That uh, fight you had with Oliver today must have upset you considerably. Yeah, uh, 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 uh. Lips tightly closed, please. Now, uh, just relax, please. Now I'll listen to the breathing. Now just inhale and exhale easily at my command. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Inhale. Mm. Oh, uh, uh, pardon me. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Again. Go. Stop. Go. Stop. Go.
Hmm, slightly gazootic. 117. Respiration irregular. I trust you and Oliver didn't come to blows this afternoon. Now, see here, young man. Don't... Uh, I thought I'd better come in and hear what the doctor had to say. John, I hope he's given you a thorough going over. Mm. And, Doctor, when you have time, I'd like to discuss my case with you. This is my... Martha. Dr. Dugan. Martha, you can discuss your case with the doctor right now while I go in and finish dinner. Oh, but there are several questions I must ask you concerning your habits of life, sir. Yeah, well, then you come and see me next week, Doctor, because, you see, I'm going away on my... Why is that without a physician in attendance? Now, uh, I can easily get Dr. Stafford's permission to go myself. <laughs> oh, that's a splendid idea, John. We should have a physician with us. Oh, Helen. This is my daughter, Helen, Dr. Dugan. How do you do? Your Aunt Martha thinks I ought to take the doctor away with us on that trip tomorrow. I don't think that's a very good idea, do you? Why, Daddy, I think it's a splendid idea. Then that's settled. And now I'm sure we're going to have a lovely time. All right. All right. And, Doctor, my private car will leave the Union Station tomorrow at <clears throat> 9 o'clock. Thank you, sir. I'll be there. Mm -hmm. Oh, and uh, I'd advise a hot mustard foot bath before... Uh, good day, sir. Good day. Good day. Uh, doctor, it's been over a year since my last operation, and I continue to have the strangest symptoms. Ah, oh, yes. Dizziness? Exactly. I understand. Hot mustard bath. What's going on here? A conspiracy? I think it'd be a splendid idea. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. A failure to recognize the family at breakfast. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, hmm. Very interesting case. Uh, we must discuss it on the train. Oh, yes. And, Doctor, remind me to talk to you about my incision. Yes, indeed. Uh, <laughs> goodbye, Miss Matthews. Goodbye, Doctor. You thought you were putting something over on your old dad, didn't you? Huh? <laughs> well, I'd like to see that young man's face tomorrow when he finds that at 8.30 instead of 9 o'clock. <laughs> what a marvelous mind you have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's his bag. <laughs> Look, Daddy, a spark plug. Well, I've taken everything else. Well, you can't help but admire his nerve. <laughs> pardon me, gentlemen. Gentlemen, pardon me. Hmm. Uh, I'll take it, Joe. I thank you, boys. Oh, well, wait a minute, Jimmy. What about the story? Yeah, one. Well, give us a lead, will you? I'm terribly boys, but Mr. Matthews swore me to secrecy. Now, you boys just tattle along to your editors and tell them you saw a newspaper man at work. Lucky stiff. If he fell into a sewer, he'd come up with a handful of diamonds. <laughs> All right, where have you been? Say, what are you made up for? I'm Dr. Dugan. One treatment to a cure. My, 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 you're looking pale this morning. Any spots before the eyes? Only once, and it's black, and his name is Dugan. Is that so? Well, I'm leaving tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock with Mr. Matthews in his private car. Tell that to the society editor. What I want is news. Who owns the railroad? What happened to Oliver? Who did it to who, and who got paid? Don't worry, you'll have all that tomorrow. And don't forget a picture. Say, speaking of pictures, where's that... No use. Hang up. She's busy to... Well, here we are, Graflex. You all set? Well, how could I be? What is this, a sunrise shot? Who is this guy? J.B. Matthews, president of the railroad. You snap out of it, now look. I want a shot of the old man, a group shot on the platform, and I want a couple of nice informal poses of the daughter. Oh, so there's a daughter, eh? I get it. While I'm getting a shot of her, I suppose it's all right for me to get you in, in it. <laughs> you try and keep me out. Come on. Yes, lady, you can take the little boy in with you. Just around the corner to the left. Thank you. Where's Mr. Matthews' private car? Uh, somewhere between here and Dayton Junction. Well, I'm his guest. He told me to be here at 9 o'clock. Yeah, his car's on the limited. Leaves at 8.30. Mr. Matthews knew that. You don't suppose that's why he told you 9 o'clock, do you? Of course not. It's a mistake. 
What's the first stop? Dayton Junction, 914. Lays over there for five minutes. Thanks. Come on. Hey, watch the rush. We gotta catch that train. Well, can we do it this afternoon? burning oil. Example of Dugan service at your beck and call any hour of the day or night. <laughs> oh, Dad, the doctor's here. You see, John, the doctor had to come way out here to meet us. Oh, it's no trouble at all. I was sure you said nine o'clock, but I must have been mistaken. We were just wondering if you misunderstood the time. But anyhow, we are glad you're here. Thank you. <laughs> well, I think the doctor liked my profession up a bit. Yes, I wouldn't mind. Hi. Uh, pardon me. Now, wasn't it nice of the doctor to go to all of that trouble just to be with us? <laughs> yes, yes. Your father's condition was exaggerating about it, but uh, he hasn't. Oh, just what has he got to mention, Doctor? Bad grass night. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 
And you couldn't have gotten away with it either, except that Dad's getting such a kick out of Aunt Martha. I thought I was a hero and I had two strikes on me all the time. And it only takes one to hit it. Go see what's the matter with him. You go. I'm busy. So am I. Maybe he's hurt. Yeah. Well, somebody ought to go. Well, I'll match you. All right. Ready? Ready. What do you got? What do you got? I ask you first. It's a draw. We'll both go. You're off the private car, Bo. Nobody kicked me off. That's my own car. That's his own car. So he said. Yes, so I said. I'm president of that railroad. That's all right, president. I understand. I'm the king of Siam. I'd like to have you meet Napoleon. Oh, don't be silly. I was on my way up to my mountain cabin. And we're just gathering material for a book. Sure. Won't you join us, Fred? Uh, can I help you, or had I better call the royal elephant? Mm. Take it easy. Take it easy. Uh, thank you very much. I had a night's rest, and you'll be OK. Now, take it easy. Yes, take sir. it easy. Right, there you are. Yes, sir. Right. There you are. Your Majesty. Yes? The royal broth is ready. Excuse me, Fred. This is important. Pinch of salt, dash of pepper, and now a whiff of garlic. One, two, three. Last night was just right. Last night was four. Three. I say four. Three. All right. Three and a half. I won't like it. Down, you're not going to send me home in disgrace, are you? Well, you know father, but I promise to use my influence with him. Well, then I'm practically a fixture. <laughs> For me, you have indigestion. Doctor's orders. Indigestion, huh? Too bad. I remember once when my stomach was upset. The royal physician made me cut down on the caviar to twice a day. Them artichokes is bad, too. Oh, yes. Or maybe Josephine didn't know how to fix them. Oh, possibly. Thank you. I'll take bread. Pardon my glove. <laughs> oh. Oh, 
Oh, where can he be? What could have happened to him? Now, Aunt Martha, I'm sure Daddy must be in one of the cars. But how can he be? I've looked in every nook and corner. Oh, what shall we do? I'm afraid we can't hold the train here any longer. Well, I suggest we go on to the next station where we can send a telegram. Yes, we'll be in Glen Cove in five minutes. We'll do that then, Conductor. Oh, oh Bob! So you won't like it, eh? I still say it was a half a whiff too much. You see what an artist is up against, Prez? <laughs> now, Prez, if you step into the drawing room, we'll have that after-dinner smoke. <laughs> With pleasure. There's one there that's almost a whole one. I see where we're going to have the 60 cent dollar. What does that mean? In case you ever get a dollar, it ain't a dollar. It's 60 cents. What happens to the other 40 cents? Well, you see, it's this way. The government's got $2,000 million in gold, yeah. which, under the 60 cent dollar, will show a profit of 4,000 millions. Now, this profit goes into the general fund. And the president says here, it will not be employed in the $10,000 million borrowing program. That means... I suggest you go in here and wire the proper authorities. Then Andy and I will hurry home so they can communicate with us there. Right. Yes. All right, on your way back, stop by the sporting editor's desk and ask him who's going to win the wrestling match tomorrow night. Teddy Harris's desk. Oh, it's you, is it? Where you been? What do you mean stealing a motorcycle? Don't you know motorcycles are expensive? It'll take you three months to get that thing paid for. What? What's that? Well, I tell you, J.B. Matthews disappeared mysteriously from his private car. Now, why didn't you say so? That's the kind of news I want. So Matthews disappeared, eh? Was he sick or did he blow? You don't know, eh? But there's one thing you overlooked. What do you mean, there's one thing I've overlooked? You haven't found him yet, have you? Hop to it. And don't forget pictures. How would you like to... Ah, uh, what's the use? 200,000 million. And that's why they call it the 60 cent dollar. You see? Yeah. But what I want to know is what happens to the other 40 cents? You get it, don't you, Paris? <laughs> no, no. It's too deep for me. Well, I'll explain it to the two of you in the morning. Uh, Napoleon, uh, my mirror. Now, if you'll excuse us, Prez, me and Nat has a little unfinished business down the road with the mate for that chicken that made that mulligan taste so good. Just make yourself at home. Sure, King. Oh, uh, would you mind doing me a favor while you're away? Not at all, Prez, not at all. Be with you in a minute. Uh, Prez, uh, what's on your mind? Just hand this in at the office of the station down the tracks. They'll recognize my signature. I'd go myself, but I think I ought to keep my weight off this ankle. That's all right, Prez. Your wish is a royal command. Consider it done. And if you get lonesome, clap your hands, and the slaves will bring on the dancing girl. What do you think of him? Oh, I guess the old guy's all right. Maybe a little uh, balmy. He's crazy as a bed bug. Yeah? yeah? What did you say on that note there? 
Miss Helen Matthews aboard President's car, train number 634, Bayshore Limited. Fell in with a couple of friends. Don't worry about me. See you soon. Love, Dad. J.B. Matthews. Can you imagine us handing this to a telegraph operator and saying, the president of the road sent her? Yeah. Any messages for Mr. Matthews Brooks? Has anyone called or any telegrams? No, ma'am, not a thing. There, you see? Oh, I know something. Oh, no. Oh, There you are, gentlemen. I had a hunch our chance is coming, but I didn't think it would be so soon. What do you mean, Tom? I found out that Matthews borrowed the money to beat us from the Chemical National, and they're holding his controlling block of Bayshore stock as collateral. And what about it? We'll form a pool, and we'll hammer down Bayshore stock. The bank will throw it on the market. We'll buy it in and control the road. Then he'll come to terms. This disappearance couldn't be a trick of the old birds, could it? If he catches a dot on the limb again, he'll take our eye teeth. I'll take care that he doesn't catch us. Get the Herald on the telephone. Now, you boys get busy. I'll take care of the old man. Well, now, now, I tell you, gentlemen, you cannot come in. But we got to write something. It might as well be the truth. Hey, now, now, gentlemen, please, just a minute. Uh, oh, Mr. James. What is it, Brooks? Oh, why, it's the gentleman of the press, sir. Oh, those rowdy reporters. Hey, what are you doing? Now, 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 calm down, boys. You heard what Brooks said. I have the situation well in hand. If any new developments arise, you can read about them in the Herald. But, Jimmy, we've got a... Mr. Jimmy to you. And in the meantime, the ladies do not care to be interviewed. Mr. Jimmy, how do you like that? I'd like it boiled in oil. Come on. Oh, imagine him out all night with no one near to remind him of his medicine or watch his diet. Oh, please, Aunt Martha. Why, he may have been kidnapped. Oh, my smelling salts, Helen. Oh, Doctor, I'm so glad you are here. Oh, I just threw out some reporters. I knew you wouldn't want to see them. Reporters? No, no, anything else but reporters at a time like this. What do you think we should do? Well, I'd suggest you call your father's office again and see if they've heard anything. Yes, Helen. Oh, do something, anything. What is it, Brooks? Uh, Mr. Macy wants Mr. James on the telephone. He says it's very important. Oh, yes, sir. Excuse me, please. Oh, oh I'm so glad the doctor's here. Professional men are so dependable. Well, I can't print that. There's got to be something new. Bayshore stock opened way off this morning, and I gotta know why. There's something phony someplace. How about women? Was the old man a chaser? No, no, this is absolutely on the level. Nothing like that. Hey, what do you mean? There's something like that with everybody. Even a guy named McKillies was a heel. Tom Oliver in the state building wants to talk to the reporter who was on Matthew's train. He does, huh? Well, he's a man who had the fight with Matthews the other day. What does he want? I don't know, but don't let it go to your head. Get over and see him and call me up when you've got something I can print. No bad news, I hope. No, no more than usual. That was my boss. He seems to think there's some reason for your father's disappearance. Oh, what reason could there be? Well, you know how editors are always looking for the sensational. Could there be a personal grudge between your father and Oliver? Not that I know of. Well, that's what I told him. But that's the kind of stuff that people want to read, and somebody's got to print it. Now, if you'd just believe it, I'm on your side and confide in me. Well, I'm not only confiding in you. I'm depending on you. 
Have you time to go to Father's office with me? My time is all yours. How do you do? Uh, my partner and me was just passing along this way, lady, and we made a little bet. I says to him, now the lady in here wouldn't turn two weary travelers away without breakfast, and he said you would. So we came up to let you decide. You mean you want a handout? Well, uh, yes, sir. Or is that too subtle? See that? There's an axe and a cross-cut saw right beside it. If you want to eat, get to work. He's the one that's hungry. Well, uh, before starting, I'd uh, have to consult my physician. Hmm. I thought so. Just a couple of tramps. Well, I'm hurt. Well, boys, isn't it about time for breakfast? Why, uh, yes. Uh, we just seen a farmhouse up the road, and uh, one of us has got to go rustle grub. <laughs> Who'll it be? Let's match for it. All right. The odd man goes. Right. Ready? Ready. Uh, what you got? Head. We both got tails. <laughs> You're elected. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys. I'll do my best. Nice fella. Yeah. Uh, maybe these make him that way. Yeah? What's that? He must have lost them. I found them over there. Oh, yeah? I've got a hunch this is where he gets those railroad president ideas. Is that so? Yeah. Let me try one. Feel anything? Not yet. You try one. You feel anything? No. Maybe we didn't take enough. Here. There ought to be at least a couple of million in these. Here goes. Before you sell any railroads, talk to me. I might want to trade you a couple of steamships for them. Good morning. I thought I told you. Oh, another one, eh? Well, if you want to eat, you've got to work. I beg your pardon, madam. I'm not here begging. I came here to buy some food. Buy? With what? With this. Is that enough? Oh, why, of course. Just step right in. I'm sorry I spoke the way I did, but you see, we get so many tramps. Do you feel anything? No, do you? Not yet. Must be pretty mild stuff. Yeah. Do you see what I see? The pills must be working. Don't move. Boys? Brought a tablecloth and all the fixings. I got some nice fried chicken, some baking powder biscuits, some baked potatoes, and good old hot coffee. What's the matter with you two? We wasn't sure it was real, Fred. Why, of course it's real. Come on, pull up. him. Oh. Your pills. Those pills are for indigestion. Well, he's got it. <laughs> well, 
we all realize that your father has sufficient means to protect his interests. No one knows where they are nor has the authority to use them. In the meantime, the bank's getting uneasy. Well, of course, there's, there's my jewelry and Aunt Martha's. Mm, well, I'm afraid that'd just be a drop in the bucket. The market closed today with Bayshore 20 points off from falling rapidly. That means that tomorrow we must have collateral for around uh, half a million dollars to protect the bank. I would be forced to sell your father's holdings. Well, of course, you've tried his friends. Yes, they're anxious to help. It's rather difficult to raise that much money on such short notice. Oh, surely we'll hear from Dad by morning. In the meantime, should I go see the bank? Well, that's an idea. Certainly can't do any harm. Well, I've got a few calls to make for my paper. I'll see you this evening. All right. I'll be waiting. Pretty good newspaper man, isn't he? Yes, and he's also a very good friend, Mr. Carter. Oh, yes, of course. It's very important for me to know the minute Mr. Matthews is found, if ever. Oh, yes, 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 of course. As a matter of fact, if I could know before anyone else, I'd gladly pay for the information. Shall we, uh, shall we say a thousand dollars? Well, I can see how important it is, Mr. Oliver. Ah, I thought you'd understand. Oh, yes. But it won't cost you any thousand dollars. You can get all the information for a nickel. Just read it in the Herald. Good day, Mr. Oliver. Yes, sir. Go right in, please. Did you see him? Sure, he went right by me. Well, he was on the train when Matthews disappeared. And if it's a trick, he knows where the old man is now. That's why I sent for him. Trailer. And if he leads you to Matthews, hold the two of them and get in touch with me. In the bag. It's unfortunate, of course, but it's the condition of the market that causes these circumstances. All right. Of course, you understand, Miss Matthews, my position. I'm simply a paid employee of the bank. But I'm sure my father will return by morning. I sincerely hope so. Our deposit is money is in jeopardy. And unless your father returns before the market closes tomorrow, the bank will be forced to dispose of his stock. How long can you hold out? Well, tomorrow's Saturday. Market closes at 12. I promise to wait until 11.30. All right, thank you. Well, that's what I call a good day's work. The bank can't hold Matthew's stock much longer. The market will open off in the morning and they'll have to let it go. If anything happens, you know where to locate. Yes, sir. And above all, don't worry. I'll check in at the office and let you know if there's any news. Now, you get a good night's rest. I'll try, Jimmy. Come on, hold your head up. Stick that chin out. Now, smile. Come on, more than that. Remember, Dr. Dugan is on the job. <laughs> <laughs> That's better. Well, good night. Good night. What do you think's behind this base shore business? I don't know, but Tom Oliver and his crowd are certainly taking advantage of the old man's disappearance. Must be something phony. Did you see the papers this morning? No, I didn't. Well, you should have, and then you'd have an idea. When Every other sheet but ours with the story. Look, the Eagle, the Standard, and the Examiner, every other paper. Look at these headlines.
Did railroad president at Scon. Look at this one. Bay Shore the coldest panicky. Look at it. I know, but that kind of stuff won't get us any place. It's not true. It might be. That's what everybody thinks, and that's what everybody wants to read. Tomorrow, some dame will shoot her husband because she doesn't like blue ties. Or a calf will be born in Arkansas with six legs. But right now, Matthews is hot copy, understand? A good thing I had sense enough to run that picture of him with a reward notice, or we wouldn't have any more story than a fish has feet. Wait, that's my phone. Is this the newspaper that wants to know about Mr. Matthews? Well, when do I get the thousand dollars? Why, just as soon as we prove the information, Mrs. Benton. Where are you? Well, he bought a big basket of food from me yesterday. He's camping out yonder in the meadows. Why, yes, Mrs. Benton. All right, Mrs. Benton. Well, you better hurry up. Can you bring the money with you? You see, on account of tomorrow being Saturday, I'd like to go to town and do a little shopping. See, we got a strawberry festival and... Yes, Mrs. Benton. Uh, wait a minute. Where are you going? What's your rush? Who was that? That was Mrs. Benton. And I'll get a picture. Looks kind of excited, don't he? Yeah, something must have popped. Where's the fella? Uh, she's inside, sir. I've got a lead on your father. I'm going out to get him now. You go down to the bank and hold everything. Uh -huh. Wait a minute. <laughs> Don't lose him. It's all very simple. We must devaluate the dollar so that the pound sterling will be equal to the French franc, you see? Oh, I see. <laughs> but the 40 cents. <laughs> I meant to return this basket yesterday. My friends and I enjoyed the food immensely. Oh, I didn't know these tramps. Uh, uh, gentlemen were friends of yours. Oh, yes, yes, yes. We've been camping out here for a couple of days, but we're moving on now. Oh, well, I, I've just taken a nice apple pie out of the oven. Won't you and your friends come in and have some? No, thanks, no, thanks. You see, we've just a short time in which to catch our train. We have some uh, money matters to discuss. Come on, gentlemen, the board meeting. <coughs> This is what we call the rod. Uh, Napoleon, get the board. We're going to show you the compass of fast travel. Now, here is your low berth. You can just get in there and sort of loll around. Now, don't you think it's delightful to loll? Yes, yes, I, I think I should enjoy lolling. Yes, and now, you press, you've got to get in on rods and get there fast. The fast freight will be here in a minute. Right. Now, you've seen how Nap did it. Now, let's see you try. Isn't that comfy? <laughs> Just as comfy as a bug in a rug. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, oh! Wait a minute. I'm, I'm caught. Uh, Napoleon, see if you can help him. Uh, take it easy now. Take, let out. Let out. Right by the heel. Get there. Are you Mrs. Oh, yes, hurry up. He was just here with a couple of hobos. My, he certainly keeps funny company for the president of railroad. Well, where'd he go now? They went down there to catch a train. Say, did you bring the money with you? Did you bring the money? Hey! Boys, I'm afraid I can't make it. You're a fine railroad president. Can't even ride the rock. Here she comes. What are we going to do now? You boys go on without me. Not on your life. We're not going to lose you. Hey, Mr. Matthew! Well, 
baby, where, where do you go? Doc. Never mind the doc stuff, Mr. Matthews. You've got to rush right back to town. Oliver has driven Bayshore down to 57. Everybody's panicking and the bank's about to sell you out. What? Go phone Oliver's office. I'll keep an eye on him. Look me up in town, boys. Goodbye, Nat. Goodbye, King. Come Goodbye. on, we've got to hurry. I knew all the time he was a railroad president. Hey, wait a minute. Your name Matthews? Yes, why? Well, I got orders to hold you on charges. Whose orders? What charges? It's a frame. Oh, you say you got Matthews? You got the other one, too? Ha <laughs> ha, good. Hold them over the weekend, and don't let them get away. Ha <laughs> ha things are coming our way, boys. I told you I'd take care of that old rattle hunk. <laughs> Go on, give it to him, Doc. <laughs> My car is up at that swamp house. Feed it for the bank. Just a minute. I'm sure my father must be on his way in now with Mr. Dugan. I hope he gets here before 11.30, Miss Matthews. Oh, I know he will. Oh, so you're one of those white folks, huh? I'm a newspaper man, and that's J.B. Matthews. So what? You ever hear of the power of the press? Ah, oh, listen, buddy. Pipe down while you're on one piece, will you? Take it easy. Look at that. Come on. Oh, pipe down. You're spending the weekend with us. What's that? Beat it, Pears. Me and Nap will take care of these two guys. Come on. She just hit 54 and a half. Sell another thousand at 54. The bank won't hold it through 53. Uh, get me Robinson. Prayers makes it. Well, if he don't, it's our fault. We should ought to send that telegram. Yes, Nat. That was an unforgivable oversight. What's holding us back? Don't worry, we'll make it. We're practically there now. Oh, I'm sure he'll be here any minute now, or Jimmy, Mr. Dugan would have phoned. What's the matter, you in trouble? No, we're just practicing. Oh, setting up exercises. You want to swap? Your car and two hundred dollars for mine? I'll give you one hundred. Sold. up, Kelly. This is J.B. Matthews. He's got to get in town in time to save his railroad. Where'd you get the car? Well, I just bought it from a guy. I know, Jimmy, but we've been on the lookout for it all night. A man escaped from the penitentiary in it. What? 
Well, what's he look like? What kind of a car has he got now? Well, he was a nice, soft-spoken, regular, wasn't he? Just a very soft. Where'd he go? There he goes now, Kelly. You know that boy. I'm sorry, Miss Matthews. I've waited five minutes over time now. I have instructions under no circumstances to hold this stock over the weekend. Well, let me speak to the president. Well, he's not in. Then get him on the phone. I can't. It's impossible. The stock must be sold. Oh, please. Please, don't you realize what you're doing? I'm sure he'll be here any minute. I'm sorry. Madison, 1243. I want you to sell. Hey, wait a minute. This is Matthews. Don't sell, buy. Buy all the base sure you can at the market. <laughs> you won't sell. Oh, Jesus. I'm still sore there. I Can never thought I'd get base sure at such a low price. But, Mr. Matthews, you're collateral. Downstairs in the safety deposit box. Come on, and we'll go get it. Burns of the Chemical National just phoned. Matthews is back. They're not throwing a stock on the market, and the old man's buying his head off. Base sure just jumped three points. Smart fella, eh? So you're going to take care of the old man. This way to the poorhouse. Any desk? Oh, it's you, is it? Where you been? What you been doing? Say, what do you mean running out on me like that? Who is this Mrs. Benton says we were a thousand dollars? What for, another motorcycle? How about that? Yeah, how does it look? And remember Mr. Matthews. By the way, where is Mr. Matthews? I haven't seen him since the wedding. You haven't seen him? Uh, no, Dr. Stafford was inquiring for him. Dr. Stafford? Yes. Go this minute, Brooks, and find him. Very well, ma'am. Don't stop until you find him. Oh, I knew I'd be worried about that man. And now? A pinch of salt? A dash of pepper? <laughs> and a whiff of garlic. John? John? Dr. Stafford's here? <laughs> Dr. Stafford. Uh-uh-uh-uh. You're right. You're right. Now, one, two, Three. That's all. Four. Three. I say four. Three. Go. It was a little flat the last time. Oh, five. I won't like it. Why, it's unpalatable. 